Hi, um, on Talk Graphics recently, uh, Tetham recently asked if the following effect, zooming and panning, could be created using Zara. Uh, I'm no coder, so here's how I'd go about it, using a Zara Flash animation. Note that the finished product won't be Flash, but HTML5, so it's cross-platform compatible on desktops, tablets and mobiles. And I'll just hit F5 to refresh that. And that's the uh, panning and zooming effect that he was after. So um, this video is about how to recreate that. Okie dok. First things first. Uh, let's go to File. New. And select New Animation. And I'll just scroll down and that's the uh, default setup. And I'll... For page size for the animation, um, utilities, options, page size 480 for 320. I'll, uh, I'll just leave it at that for the time being, but you can always change that if you want. Um, the next thing I want to do is get a photograph, and I've got this photograph of my two of my grandchildren, um, Smashing Kids, edit, copy. And uh, control shift, control V to paste that into there. Now you can instantly see that the photograph is larger than the page size was. And this is one of the small problems you have when doing this, but it's not a great unsurmountable. Just set the view property down to wireframe right down here. And if I zoom to 50%. You can see that there's the stage, or page size, whatever, and this is the photo, which is way bigger than that. Um, so when you go up there, you can't see where the page size is. So what I tend to do is just get the rectangle tool. I'll go back to 100% now. Uh, and make a rectangle just slightly bigger. Doesn't have to be too, but as long as it's outside, the thing I'll set that I'll give that a line color of red and a fill color of none. Now you can see that what will be included on the page and what won't be included on the page. Because if I just hit View Swift at the moment, that will just bring up fill that bit that's on the stage or on the page. You won't see the rest of the photograph, which is what we want. Um, the next thing you've got to do is because we're using, uh, going to be using uh, Swift animation, Flash animation, you've got to select that photograph and give it a name. So you get that little uh, name luggage label type icon. Uh, I'll call it Photo. That's an exciting name. Just click Add. Close that. Um, next thing I want to do is copy that frame. So I'll just hit copy. So now I've got one frame like that and one frame like that. This is the actual frame that I wanted to end up in. This is the frame, that the first frame that's going to show. And again, I'm going to go to 50%. What I'm going to do is resize this um, with the selector tool. Set the aspect ratio is locked, and then hold down the shift key, and that will ease that down. Ease that down like that. I can change that around a bit. Let me change like that. So that's the start frame, and that's the end frame, and that's all that's. Uh, Actually, important and notice that the uh, red rectangle here won't be shown because it's off the page. It's outside the page limit. Uh, next thing to do is select some uh, properties. Um, 0.5 of a second is far too slow on animation loop and speed. So I'll select that to 4 seconds, say. Apply, close. 
Now if we test the Swift, that's the effect that uh, it was after. It's mainly just a zoom, there is some slight uh, panning on it, but it uh, doesn't really matter. That's, that's the way you can do it. You can mess around with the animation as much as you want. Um, obviously, you don't want that rotating time and time again in your final um, thing. You just want it to do at once and, and finish. So the last step here is to select frame 2 um, properties and just go hyphen yes stop apply close test it again it zooms in once and stops which is what we want so that's fine shut that preview down i'll go file export animation where's exp uh, export animation and i'm going to call this on the bunk swath i've already done this once but I'll just go that go to the options um, I'll bring the JPEG quality up to 80 it's not going to make a big difference so put apply close and then export replace okay so we've now got that swoof um, the next stage is to go to Google Swiffy Okay, the next uh, step is to go to Google Swiftie, as I said. So if you just type in here, Swiftie, Google Developers Swiftie Convert. So I want to convert that Swift to an HTML file. And it says, um, Select this Swiffy, you can browse there if you want. I tend to use everything. Um, I've done that search there, so I can just drop that in on there. So it's already selected. Uh, accept the terms. Say that content is yours. And then you upload. And Swiffy conversion, 61 kilobytes. Uh, gzip um, if you view the conversion that's exactly how we want it to work I think that's fine and it stops it doesn't zoom in again as we wanted so all we've got to do now is save that so if you right click on this view conversion and say save link as I'm going to change save it as on the bunk HTML save and that's finished with Swiffy so we've now got that Swift file converted into from flash into HTML5 5, so it will uh, be on, show on iPads and every other product you can think of uh, the next thing is to upload the HTML file uh, I use FileZilla okay so now you've created uh, an HTML file via Swiffy to your uh, from your Flash. So uh, next thing to do is upload it to your server. And here I'm using FileZilla. Uh, and once more, I'll bring up everything. And I'm looking for the on your bunk HTML. You can browse other than this using the left hand pane if you want. But um, I know it's there. So all I've got to do is drag and drop that onto Zuma and there's that on the bunk HTML so that's now uploaded to my server the next thing I've got to do is to create uh, using Zara create a web page and pull that in using an iframe so in, in Zara here I've got an iframe and I've already made it 480 by 320 pixels. I don't think you need to, but it gives you an idea of the size that it's going to occupy on the page. Uh, and on my desktop, I always keep a, a, a little iframe.txt file. So it helps me remember it. And here's the one here. It's 480 by 320 
what I need to do is change that to this is one I'd done earlier on there bunk HTML the width is 480 the height is 320 scrolling is no frame width is 0 margin height is 0 margin width is 0 so all I needed that is there copy that go into properties web properties go into placeholder and I'll control V I'll paste that in there now on the bunk so that's on there now so hopefully if everything uh, works when I just go uh, click to preview there you have the thing Beautifully pasted into the page and it stops as expected. Um, one final thing, I think um, the original poster also wanted some text to to scroll in um, at the top. You could have done the scrolling text in the Swift file if if you required, but um, if not, just put this and we'll match that to the background. I'll not just leave that yellow for the time being so you can see what I'm doing. Um, previous zoom, not 100%. You could have scrolling text come in in the Swift before you can convert it to HTML5, five, or you can have Zara do that. So, what I'm going to do here is just type in some text. Here's my fan kids having fun. Just let's uh, make that a bit bigger. That there. Better with a D earring. Okay, select that. Um, I don't know how that will look over the top, but uh, I can go to web animation and I can reveal it, um, and I'll give it a delay of sliding from the left. Uh, and I'll give it a delay of this full second delay, so I'll make that five second delay before it scrolls in. And that's got, I think that's two seconds or one second um, sliding for less than I only wanted to do it once. Apply. Okay, and this time when I preview, you that comes in like that. And then that goes in there. Um, one thing I think is slightly wrong is that this needs to be Control F to make bring it to the front, and then select it to make it white. And then it only just comes in over the image, over the photograph, and not on the. Doesn't start from the edge of the page. So let's try again. Zooms in. And the text comes across only on the photograph. Um, so I think that's looking good. Um, I don't know if it would be better white. Let's have a try. Um, preview. Yep, yeah, there you go. Um, I think that works quite well. As I said, you could have had that text and done that in, in the Swift file before you exported it. But if you ever want to change that text for an image, then it's easier to do it in Zara than have to go back into the file, animation file that you created it with, then change it in Swiffy, etc, etc. It's easier just to have the fact that that text coming on, and as you can see, that text is still selectable, and search engines can pick it up, which they can't do in Swiffy, I don't think. Anyway, hope 
This is Egg. Hope this helped. All the best. Cheers. Goodbye.